What's up guys, David here from Phone Bob Fan. And in this video, I'm gonna try to help answer a question that a lot of you guys have been asking, and that's how much of a difference or how much better is having 1080p resolution on a smartphone, like on the new Galaxy S4, for example, compared to a 720p resolution like on its predecessor here in the Galaxy S3. In other words, is having a full HD screen really all that it's made out to be, or is it just another gimmick that manufacturers use to produce some kind of marketing hype? Well, let's go ahead and find out. So on a phone like the Galaxy S4, with its full HD 1920 by 1080 resolution packed into a display size of less than 5 inches, you get a PPI, which stands for pixels per inch or dots per inch, of 441. In contrast, the 1280 by 720 resolution on the Galaxy S3's 4.8 inch screen gives you a PPI of just 306. Now when it comes to PPI or pixel density, the main thing to remember is that the higher the PPI is, the more detailed there will technically be on the screen, at least inch for inch. The next thing to remember is that PPI is based off two main factors. One of course is the resolution or the total number of pixels, and the second is the size of the screen that's actually housing those pixels. So the bigger the screen is, the less the pixel density will be if resolution stays the same, and the opposite is true with the smaller screen having a higher pixel density with the same resolution. Now considering that these two phones in particular have similar screen sizes but have a big difference in total number of pixels, you don't really have to be a mathematician to know that having 1080p resolution is going to give you a significantly higher pixel density and therefore better inch for inch quality than 720p. Just take one look under the microscope and you can clearly see the more than 130 ppi difference between these two screens. This is what regular text looks like on the 720p Galaxy S3. Here's what that same text looks like on the 1080p Galaxy S4. But that's the text right? So here's a picture on the 1080p Galaxy S4. Okay, you ready? Here's what that same picture looks like on the 720p Galaxy S3. Yeah, pretty big difference, right? I mean, when you look at them side by side, there's really no comparison. Text and photos just look so much sharper and so much more detailed on that 1080p display. So is this proof enough that 1080p is indeed significantly better and it's not all just a load of marketing to sell us new phones? Well, yes and no. You see, the truth is, it's not that simple and that's because, for one, we don't look at our phones through a microscope, we use our eyes, and two, there's a point in pixel density, arguably to be somewhere between 250 and 350 ppi, that most experts like DisplayMate's Dr. Raymond Sonera say additional pixels don't necessarily translate into better quality with ordinary viewing. As in, anything above this range, those eyes we use to look at our screens aren't really able to appreciate. In fact, this is why Apple calls the display on the iPhone a retina display, since its pixel density still falls within this retina range, despite having a lower resolution than even 720p thanks to its smaller display size. Now look, I had heard this argument before I even touched a 1080p phone in person and it made perfect sense to me. I mean, it's the same thing as when you stand up close to a 1080p TV. With your face up close to the screen, you'll most likely be able to see the pixels, given that pixel densities on most HDTVs are around 50 ppi, give or take depending on the size. Now, while that may seem really low to you, when you go sit back on the couch, those individual pixels just sort of blend away into the picture to the point where they're not even noticeable. What these experts are saying is that the 250 to 350 ppi range is more than enough for us not to be able to see the difference when it comes to our phones. While it's a logical argument, you know me, I still had to see it for myself, so after hours of analyzing these two screens side by side, looking at a whole array of pictures and text with just my eyes this time, so no microscope, I have to say that I actually do see a difference, but it's something that I only notice when I'm actually looking for the difference with the phone close up to my face like this. With the phone further out like this with ordinary viewing, I honestly can't see the difference and that's with perfect vision. Now with the whole 1080p versus 720p argument, this is how I sum it up. You don't necessarily see the difference with your eyes on a day to day basis with ordinary viewing, but there definitely is a difference as clearly evidenced when you look at it under the microscope, which sort of makes you feel the difference when using the two phones. But as a disclaimer, I have to tell you that I think the majority of that feeling of better quality, at least when it comes to these two phones, is due to the better screen technology used on the Galaxy S4 compared to that on the Galaxy S3, just like when you're comparing Super LCD 2 to Super LCD 3 screens. I guess what I'm trying to say is that, just like with cameras, it's not all about the resolution. Resolution definitely plays a big part, a huge part, as more resolution does mean more detail, but at the same time, things like contrast, brightness, and even energy efficiency also play a role in what makes one display better than the other. So when it comes to these two phones, the Galaxy S4 screen is better. I mean, hands down, there's really no question about it. But when I say that, it's mainly because the S4's display is brighter and its colors are a little bit more accurate. If it was the other way around where the S3 had the 1080p resolution and the S4 had 720p, 
but everything else on the two screens stay the same, I think I'd still go for the S4 screen because, again, the difference in resolution isn't all that noticeable on a day-to-day -day basis, but brightness, the contrast, and all those other things definitely are. With that said though, I'd still like to see 1080p resolution on high-end smartphones from here on out, at least for phones with screens over 4.5 inches. Sure, there isn't a significant perceptual difference between the two and the extra pixels can actually consume a little bit more battery life, but being the phone buff that I am, and I'm sure you guys could agree with me on this one, I just like knowing that my screen is completely maxed out. As in, no matter how hard I look, near or far, I can't see the individual pixels on my screen. Now, wanting my phone screen maxed out doesn't mean I'd want anything higher than 1080p on a smartphone. I mean, if a 5-inch phone had a 4K display or something crazy like that, it would have a PPI of over 850, which would be a complete waste and I don't even want to imagine what the battery life would be like. So honestly, 1080p is the highest resolution we really need on a smartphone, at least in the current form factors, and I think it's the highest resolution that could be at least somewhat justified considering the toll those extra pixels take on battery life and the total cost of the phone. On tablets, however, it's a whole different story. The bigger screens mean less pixel density with the same resolutions, so bumping up resolutions to at least 1080p or higher on 7 and 8 inch devices and up to 4K resolutions on 10 inch tablets somewhere down the line would not only make a noticeable difference, but it would also just be downright amazing. And speaking of amazing, just to put things into perspective really quick, a 4K 10 inch tablet, which is double the resolution of 1080p, would give you a PPI of around 440 which, if you recall, is right around what you're already getting on most 1080p smartphones today. So yeah, pretty crazy. Okay, there are a few other differences between 1080p and 720p, which are explained in the link to phonebook.com right below the like button of this video, where you'll also see a comparison with the Galaxy S2 screen under the microscope, which, in case you don't remember, had a resolution of just 800 by 480 so definitely something worth checking out. But that's pretty much it for me in this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to join over 100,000 phone buffs who get mobile technology videos just like this all the time. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.